Hello, I'm Gary Miller, Provost of Wichita State University. Welcome to Wichita State in the World. My guests today are Patricia McDonald, Director of the Wichita State University's Ulrich Museum of Art, and Kelly Callan, Chair of the Museum's Advisory Board. We'll examine how contemporary art expands human experience in our community, the nation, and the world. Let's get started. Welcome to Wichita State in the World. My guests today are Patricia McDonald, Director of the Ulrich Museum of Art, and Kelly Callan, Chair of the Ulrich Advisory Board. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. So we're sitting here, this is not our usual studio. We're Correct. sitting here in the Ulrich Museum. We are. This is wonderful. Tell me about this, this room. And we are in the Joan S. Barron Gallery, as a matter of fact, um, thanks to a very generous patron. And we're in a gallery where we display our permanent collection on an ongoing basis. This is actually a somewhat new installation. Every year we chained out the work from our collection that we show and we present it thematically. So pretty cool space, kind of nice TV studio. One of the things that's interesting, as a University Art Museum, we focus on modern and contemporary work. So this is an array of largely 20th, a couple 21st century works of art, and consciously it's a real mix of photography and paintings and drawings. Um, and this is an exhibition that looks at artists who are questioning and exploring the places that they're from or particular spaces. So that's the link or connection to all the works that are in the gallery at the moment. Kelly, do you remember the first time you were ever in an art museum? Actually, I was brought up in art museums and I was brought up at the then the um, Wichita Art Association, now the Wichita Center for the Arts. And I also remember going to the old art museum, the original building, uh, when I was growing up. So my, my mother was very into the arts, the visual arts. My father was into the, perform the performing arts. So I, I did both growing up. So you up. started so early, you don't remember the yeah, first Yeah, I, I have no yeah. idea. What about you, Patricia? I would say ditto. Um, I was born into a family that just went to art museums. Oh, yeah. You know, the way some people drink water. So. Um, I live in it now professionally because it was such a comfortable place growing up. It's funny because uh, I think all of us, a lot of people we know just go, will just go to an art museum if, or take an hour or when you're in D.C. or New York or some, someplace. And, uh, and then for others, that, uh, that's a journey. Yeah, you're right. Uh, an, early, an early thing for... Absolutely. We just had a, uh, an event at the Wichita Art Museum just last weekend uh, to bring in people from the community. And we didn't know what we were going to do, if it was going to happen, if it was going to work. We had six, between six and 700 people. Most of really? them had never been, never been to an art museum, never been to that art museum. And we then, it, it kind of hit us between the eyes. There are a lot of people out there. You're absolutely right. It is a journey. They loved it. They had a great time. They brought their kids. The kids had a ball. Um, going to art museums for some people, it's just not, a, it's just not part of their lives. Whereas for us, it is part of wow, our lives. Wow, what a huge success to have, yeah. you know, that many people turn out then. It was yeah. great. It was great. We had a great time. Uh, I want to talk about the collection a little bit here. Um, 6,300 pieces that you have, is that about right? That's and, about right, uh, yeah. Do you have a favorite? Well, the political answer is <laughs> yes, <not. laughs> right. a parent should not have play favorites with their children. Well, what you could say is I have a favorite, just not tell us what it is. Um, I, well, I'll, <laughs> what I'll, I'll tell you the work that I am most impressed by coming here to take the directorship um, of the Ulrich Museum of Art, and that's the Jean Miro mural that we have yeah. outside on the facade of the building. Um, it is a monumental piece. It's 28 feet tall by 52 feet across, and it's the single work uh, in our collection that absolutely puts our campus and our city right. on the map um, in the art world. And, and to think that the initial leadership of the museum um, here on campus had the vision 
to take on that kind of ambitious project. I mean, this is a, this is a work that was tailor-made and custom-made for the Ulrich Museum and for Wichita State yeah. University. So if you ask me what I'm most impressed by, that absolutely is, is the work I would name hands down. We're going to, we need to talk about that because I know you're very involved in uh, restoring that, that work. And uh, I uh, assume that's a huge project. There are a couple panels that have been taken off. Some already. of our visitors and, would notice that yeah. we're, we're working on it. We're researching it at the moment. And yes, um, like anything that lives for 30 years or so in the elements outdoor, um, then maintenance needs to happen. And that's something that we're embarking upon and, and really creating um, the, right, the right path, the right course for treatment. I think everybody at the university feels that's a precious uh, resource for this university. And it is. I, actually, what I remember when I was thinking about coming to the city, to Wichita, I saw an image of it on the Chamber of Commerce um, website. So it's not just this university, it's really the city and I would say the region that's embraced that work. And for a community our size to have something that important is very unusual. It does impress an awful lot of people yes. when they come and see it that they cannot believe that we have a Miro right. in Wichita, Kansas. It impressed me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I know we always drive, that's the first place we go when we drive visitors around. Yeah, is right. that, that's good is that, to see that. To see that and, well, and I would say for viewers of this program who aren't aware, Jean Miro, Spanish artist, um, an exact uh, compatriot or in the same time frame of Pablo Picasso right. centered his life in Paris internationally important so huge and that we would have such a prestigious artist with a commission here in Wichita at the end of his his career is extraordinary this collection is does it have themes is it a is it a general collection of art? We focus on modern and contemporary, and um, we focus on modern and contemporary, I would say for at least two reasons and perhaps um, a number more. When the museum was founded in 1974 as a campus organization, we wanted to be cognizant of two other visual arts organizations in this city and, and work to complement them. So a focus on art of today made better better sense um, to fit in as a niche with this within this community but also if you think about it here on campus Gary we train tomorrow's artists yes we do um, yeah. you know we have a whole program um, teaching uh, artists to then go out in the world um, and achieve and so that as a campus museum we we orient ourselves to contemporary art that too makes a little bit of sense yeah. I'm interested, Kelly, in um, how important the actual collection is to community engagement in the arts. I mean, having a museum is important, and mm -hmm. showing that museum and having the Moreau, and, and, uh, but in this community, people know these collections, uh, they know the details of them, is that? Actually, in this community as a whole, um, knows that this is the leading contemporary art museum in the region. They do know that. Uh, whether they know actually what we have in our collection, I'm not so sure I can, I can say that for a fact. But I do know that people come here because of our outstanding contemporary uh, collection. We have um, doubled and tripled our right. attendance in the past few years, which we're very excited about. And I think one of the reasons is because we have such an amazing collection, we are bringing in such great exhibits. Uh, but I think people are kind of getting us finally. I don't think they quite understood us before. I don't think they understood what contemporary art was all about and what it can bring. And I think they're finally getting it. And what do you tell them about, uh, what do you tell the community about what uh, art museums bring to, uh, to oh. the community? That's a, that's a tough question. I don't think uh, many people on campus or in the community understand the degree to which the Ulrich Museum as a university museum actually does serve the community. Um, it's 60 to 70 percent of our audience that come not from this campus um, but from mm -hmm. from this local community. We recently updated our mission statement which now right. is um, expand human experience through encounters with art of our time. How we've articulated our mission 
connects with a sea change that's been happening in art museums generally, as well as university art museums. In the past, a mission statement might have talked about the significance of the collection and preserving heritage and you know right. all those yeah. things that are still sort very of archival, yeah, uh, yes exactly to, yeah. very right. valid yeah. very valid and we still do but people museums have been changing their mission statements to really focus on the people we have the collection we do the preservation because of our visitors and even the art museum, the Association of Art Museum Directors um, is currently changing their mission statement, their vision, and they're changing it to making art essential to everyone. So, you know, just adding that on to reflect that we're part of um, an important national trend and, and we are eager to make an impact in the community. So do art museums extend uh, the educational mission like we do and if, for example in literature we not only want to have students experience it but to gain some understanding of the human condition is that part of your mission too not only to experience art but to use it to gain some understanding oh abso absolutely I, I think the mission of any art museum is educational at its core at a university art museum it's even more so it's deepened it's always valuable. It really is. It's one of those things that, that I know there are a lot of people in this world who don't get it, who don't understand the arts, who don't understand music, who don't understand uh, anything in the cultural side of, of, the, of the, the universe, actually. But it's one of those um, very important parts of our, of our lives, of our, of our beings. Right. Um, for example, and I've, I've never forgotten this, there was a PSA on TV several years ago. It was a room, and it had the sofa, it had the tables, it had the lamps, it had everything, and it had pictures, the whole bit. And what it said was, without art, this is what would happen. And the art came off the walls. The lamps came out of the room, the sofa came out of the room, everything came out of the room until it was just a blank wow. screen. And it's so absolutely true. There is nothing that is not somehow affected by an artistic feel in our lives, whether you like it or you don't. And I think there's an instinct to it. I want to use this, you're going to love this story. I think I've told this to you okay. before, uh, because I want to talk about these, uh, this outdoor sculpture collection. Mm -hmm. But when they put the Otternus piece in, uh, the millipede, Millie over, mm -hmm. over here, mm -hmm. I was driving in the campus. It, it was actually the day we were going to dedicate that. Okay. And there were a group of young children, they probably were in the second or third grade, and some teacher had brought them there and they were running around this piece. And one of them, a young girl, had embraced the head of this thing and was kissing it. <laughs> <laughs> so nice this, piece of, this piece of art had uh, sparked her imagination and Absolutely. some s deep sense of uh, feeling in her. Uh, and since then, I, in fact, I changed my drive to campus so I could drive by this thing every morning because it it always makes me smile. It does. Yeah. Just this week um, I left somewhat later it was 7 30 at night or something like that and you know warm summer evening and there was a big crowd of people hanging out at, at Millie probably seven on top of him her. I know that drives you crazy <laughs> but I don't think Tom Actually, would I, I rather <laughs> like it in part because of the because of the artist yeah. it really puts his work out there for yeah. exactly for that people. kind yeah. of embrace yeah. by you know uh, people, but you know, to see a whole group of people who are here on campus, but circling around and and grouped and clustered by that piece, it's 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 doing what public art should do. But that's one piece of a fabulous uh, outdoor sculpture collection, which is something that uh, George and I really were really struck by when we first walked on campus. And uh, tell us a little bit about that, because it's something I'd, I'd never seen on a uh, university campus. There's 77 works spread across our 330-acre campus. Um, and actually, Public Art Review, which is the journal for uh, people involved in public art uh, nationally, uh, did a survey and said that Wichita State University's uh, outdoor sculpture collection is among the top 10 on university campuses across the country. So that's really quite an achievement. And we have work by 
um, Henry Moore and Klaus Oldenburg and George Ritchie and you know really just the whole list of things in addition to the brand new Tom Otterness and Andy Goldsworthy so really kind of a feather in our cap. And students have funded part of these, the acquisition of From some of the these, very which is beginning, very beginning, students exciting. have been involved yeah. and voted um, mm -hmm. to spend some of their student fees to help make this happen on campus. Yes. I was around when Martin Bush was putting that together, and I remember the comments about the outdoor sculptures and the thinking, what in the world is this man doing to our campus? And what has happened is that he did the right thing, obviously, and he he yes. he he did an amazing um, thing for for Wichita State by bringing all of those uh, those incredible artists to Wichita, and by bringing people onto the campus to see the outdoor sculpture. Yeah. They might not have done that otherwise. Yeah, it's interesting. We even connect it to uh, legislative visits that we have here because there are a lot of people in the state who come and and uh, for and want to see some of the. Uh, I'll bet. Uh, oh, that's a nice connection. That's, that's yeah. wonderful feedback yeah. to hear, yeah. I want to know from both of you how you keep the collection current. We focus on contemporary, and contemporary is the spectrum that keeps <laughs> going into the future. And um, so we need to stay on top of, and thankfully, wonderfully, uh, our museum has some quite generous endowment funds to be able to continue to add to the collection, although um, I would um, also say donations to the collection um, are, is something that's always welcomed. Somebody and donating a piece of art they have or... Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I, would say, I would say across the country, 90% of what you see in an art museum came as a donation, not as a, a purchase. Um, from that museum. Typically those things that we are putting forward for acquisition, um, we're using endowment um, resources for that. Um, you know, but every once in a while there's a different kind of project that um, really connects with the passion of a particular individual. We had someone this last year who helped us acquire more Gordon Parks photography. Um, right. Gordon Parks Great. is very yeah. important to this university because we acquired um, his papers and they're in the university archive. Um, as that happened, the Ulrich Museum only had four photographs. If this university has just become what I would call Gordon Park Central, if, if you are a scholar or an artist who is interested in parks, you're going to come to Wichita State at a certain point. We need to have a collection um, of important stature that complements right. the archival collection. So we are working to build that collection, and I'm proud to say we now have 25 photo photographs by Gordon Parks. I know that you've uh, been very supportive of the museum, and we, mm -hmm. we very much appreciate that. And uh, I mean, uh, how important is that to museums, this community support, individual support? It is very important to any cultural institution, especially because they don't seem to be as supported as much as other organizations, other nonprofits. Those of us who do understand what is going on here, we all love it, and we all wouldn't do anything else but be here. Um, we, we think this is an amazing museum. We think Patricia is incredible, and we think that, <laughs> that she has done amazing things for not only the university, but also the community. Well, and I would send compliments right back to Kelly. She, um, she and her family are a long time and very generous supporters yes. um, of the Ulrich Museum and the campus. Um, and, and she's one example of really a fabulous circle of patrons that this museum enjoys. This seems Absolutely. like there's a broader, a wider variety of events, different Absolutely. kinds of events. Absolutely. Uh, better events. Right, and, right, uh, right. We attribute that to her leadership. <laughs> yes, but we it's do. Also <laughs> <that>. <laughs> yes, we do. Whether she uh, wants to know that or not. Yeah. But yes, we do. As I mentioned before, our, um, our attendance has doubled, tripled, whatever. Um, actually a lot of that's because of what she has done and we are we that is something we had to push for when I started 10 years ago 12 years ago we had to literally push to get people in this door and we had to tell them how wonderful the, the Ulrich was well now they know that because they know of all the wonderful things that are going on and Patricia's done it the right way she's gotten people in the door for the right reasons and that's what we needed one of the things I think is interesting about this programming Patricia is the emphasis on the artist yeah, I, I really um, 
George and I have one son who uh, is who went to an art school, and um, there was a certain passion in him that wasn't being met when he was in grade school and uh, in high school. That was just released when uh, when he got there, and we could see it. But you've had some artists come in who've actually talked about that in their life, and that's right. those are the ones that are real fascinating. And, uh, and we've had some great talks and some really wonderful feedback from the audience in recent years. People saying, you know, it's our best artist talk I ever heard. We, we, we think we have one of the best uh, music and. Uh, mm -hmm. visual art mm -hmm. and uh, theater programs in the country. Um, for a young artist, um, a painter or a sculptor in that program, how important is the relationship with a the museum? There's just no replacing um, a, a direct first-hand encounter with a work of art um, and that's true whether it's music or theater or the visual arts and it's oh so important um, for the visual arts so that we have here on campus immediately adjacent to where the students are going to classes an opportunity for them to conveniently drop in you know even if they only spend 10 minutes sort of en route between classes um, to have uh, a deeper engagement, maybe come back a couple of different times because one particular work of art, it just arrests them in some way. Then uh, another opportunity that we have at the museum um, is internships. We take a good number of students under our wing on an annual basis. Another program that we've initiated um, in recent years, Gary, is something that we call um, University at the Ulrich. A faculty member is able to bring their class here to the museum. We work with them in advance to identify a handful of things that we will put up for them and them only in the conference room. We, we reserve it for them in their oh, class a for idea. a, a yeah. week. And yeah. they, they are able to bring students in and use work of art to have a, a different kind of perspective, a different in into whatever the content of that particular class is. And all English 101 classes are now taking part um, really? in this program. I, Every I just, single- That's something I just learned, that is fabulous. What about um, introducing young artists, artists who want to be professionals to communities of art lovers. Um, that is, I think, probably one of the reasons why we, we had uh, such a, a large following in the beginning was because of the relationship between the School of Art and Design and the uh, Ulrich. We did have actually even a, a, an organization called the Equinox Society that got uh, community members involved in both, both entities. And it was a great idea, it was wonderful, and people really wanted to see the two together. They wanted to see the young artists, um, what they did in, in, in their creativity. They also wanted to see how it would work here. Um, it's, it's, it is a big deal to the community. You can see that in action, really, when, when there are events here and yes. students are showing their yes. work, yes. and community members like you and others are we love it. Discussing yes. them, and you yes. can see they're a little tense. It's like an oral exam, it's true. almost. But, <laughs> but true. I think there's so much learning going it's on. True. It's, it's true. It's true. Well, it's and 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 that's really putting um, your finger on something, Gary. In that, it's the art that you have on display. It's the incredible speakers that and, and programs that you have that you present, but it's something that I also call the art tribe. It, it's the events. It's the it's the openings that are parties. And um, you know, Kelly used the word following. There, you know, the Ulrich has a following of people who show up and want to be counted and you know see and be seen. And for the young, young emerging artists. Uh, being part of where the action is, is they find it here at the Ulrich. This is a cult cultural epicenter of the city. I, I mean, I come up here for concerts and art showings all the time. So. I actually teach at Collegiate, and our art teacher always brings students out here to do a sculpture tour, and it's an incredible collection that's right here at Wichita State University, and we're so lucky to have such forward-thinking people right here in the heartland. I used to live in Dallas, and everywhere, anywhere you go in Dallas is a 45-minute commute. So I live in Belle Plaine at the Bartlett Arboretum. I drive up here as often as I can. It's just a 20-minute commute, but it's worth it because of the incredible opportunities to see art, to hear great music, and um, I'm so lucky to have these two different experiences. 
I'm not an art major or anything like that, but I think it's uh, pretty interesting to see some of the art pieces and some of the story behind the art. Some it takes um, it, you have a different interpretation when you first look at the art pieces. You thought, well, this is how it seems looks like to you, but then when you read the narratives or the explanation, it's so oh, wow, this is how the artist thinks. Yeah. The one cube uh, dusted, oh, that, that it really interested me. It, it's still sticking with me. I don't, I don't quite know what to think of it. It kind of disturbed me a little bit, but that's why I think art should do it. It makes you feel something. There's a core of people that, that are passionate about the arts and are willing to experiment in the sense of, of coming to listen to groups you've never seen before, look at art you've never seen before, and to experience that. Unfortunately, something about a college campus that insulates itself and people don't seem to like to come on campus for events, unless it's athletics. And, and so this is really drawing people into the campus to see what Wichita State has to offer and what if we can um, uh, promote in the sense of, of the arts and the culture that, that reside right here. I'm concerned about um, art in schools. I, uh, it like. seems to be the first thing to go. It's, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. What do we do about that? I, is well, there a... it's interesting. The Old Rich has a program whereby we provide bus reimbursement. Um, if you are a classroom teacher, in, really in our metropolitan area, and you don't have the resources um, for a field trip simply to pay for the school bus, we'll help you with that. We'll take care of it. Um, the Overch is always free. Um, we really want to make an impact and make an impact on the community and, and help enhance the quality of life overall. Again, Wichita State University and urban serving. At the Old Ridge, we like to seed uh, participating in the arts and museum going. And the studies tell us that the best and most effective way that you can do that is expose children early on in life. So our intention with um, you know, paying for the school buses is that we can get the, the, the youth of Wichita not just once, maybe twice or three times across their K through 12 education to, to come to the Ulrich and have that positive experience yeah, at an a, art museum. What a great program. You have been wonderful. Yeah. Kelly, thank you for your support Absolutely. of this museum and your work. Thank you for coming. Gary, thank you for your leadership on this university well, campus. Yes, so. we appreciate it. Yes. And thank you for joining us for Wichita State and the World.